Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Reenactorisms, what are they? Let's check it out. After the Tombstone Redemption event, I was visited at work by another subscriber. He goes by JM, and he presented me with this really beautiful holster he made. Thanks, man. I love it. He's an avid Civil War and Old West reenactor and told me he won an award in Tombstone for having historically researched clothing. JM mentioned a term I'd heard once before from Dave Rogers, another historian. The word reenactorism is when something regarding the period you're portraying is incorrect, but gets adopted as correct by a number of people. It actually goes very far back, and it's even being used in cosplay nowadays. Let's use an example to better illustrate the definition. When I first got into the hobby, I bought suspenders and was told by a number of folks that they weren't called suspenders back then. They were braces or galluses. Well, after some simple research where I found period advertisements and catalogs that actually called them suspenders, I realized there's an issue floating around. Houston, we have a problem. It appears that it only takes one or two people to convince many other folks that something is right or wrong when it isn't. Another one that keeps coming up is, they always wore bandanas with the triangle in the back. First, using the word always is a slippery slope. It just takes one photo or account from the era to disprove it. Sometimes those have to be looked up and nitpicked to establish the commonality, but the cat is now out of the bag. Second, the bandana is a tool first and a fashion statement after. Ranchers and laborers who wore them were concerned with function and wore them how they needed them, as proven in these tintypes. Incidentally, they also used them as ties on occasion, which adds another layer of functionality. I used to think when I saw Indian Wars reenactors that their yellow bandanas were a part of their uniform, but that's simply not true. Yes, another reenactorism. Many of us like wearing the clothes and accoutrements, but we tend to go hog wild on some things. Too many weapons while walking around in town, the wrong colors of beadwork on clothing with a Native American flavor, that sort of thing. Language is a big one. They didn't talk that way or they never said things like that. Yeah, be careful on this one. There is such controversy about this subject that I made a whole video on how they spoke back then, which dispels some of the myths. Save me last right, Ranger. Before he takes me. I ain't no preacher. I spoke with Karen McKechnie, a costumer and researcher for the Old West period. She told me that some glaring reenactorisms for women would be wearing formal evening attire in the daytime walking in the street. Another one is wearing revealing saloon girl outfits in the street. Remember, Victorian etiquette was still a thing, and women showing too much skin in public would be very frowned upon. In an article about reenactorisms, she wrote, to have the right look, one must not only inform themselves about the subject, but they must also be willing to alter their beliefs as to what is correct in light of new information. We can never achieve total accuracy for the simple reason that we're not living in the all-encompassing world of the late 19th century. Hmm. Well said, Karen. But we can try. The internet has made so much of this research available to us now. 30 years ago, companies started making reproduction clothing, hats, and other accessories to help us be more accurate. The desire is there, and these days I see less people taking shortcuts. What it comes down to is that we're all still learning. Ain't it grand? Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on Down the Trail. It is so hot out right now, like Africa hot, only Arizona hot, which is probably like Africa hot. <laughs>